So now we are having uh, El Movimiento Feminista de Madrid, the feminist movement from Madrid, which is a group for, uh, focused on women's rights and they organize and are dedicated to political work and actions in, in Madrid. So welcome and over to you. Thank you. So hi, um, I'm Anna and from Rats and Berlin, we are supporting and working um, together to be there in Spain the next 8th of March. And we really recommend everybody to join the Movimiento Feminista Madrid because they have been doing uh, great actions uh, before. Uh, for example, they uh, work together to make uh, different kinds of flyers and um, special banners for this action. So we are very happy to be supporting the Movimiento Feminista Madrid uh, and we invite all our international friends to join them. Thank you so much to Women's Declaration International for having us today. We are really delighted to be here. I'm speaking as a spokeswoman for the Feminist Movement of Madrid. My name is Laura Rivas, and uh, we are an independent regional group that is not affiliated in any way to any political party or any trade union. We work auton autonomously, although we do collaborate with other organizations in Spain on different initiatives. Uh, we are fighting to take back Women's Day, essentially, Women's Day and other uh, women's center um, events throughout the year, but especially the Women's Day March has been our main fight for the past years because it was co-opted as it has been everywhere around the world. It was co-opted by trans activism and so-called liberal feminism. I'd like to say before I begin that this presentation was actually made by my fellow feminist, Ana de Blas, from the Feminist Movement of Madrid, and I edited and translated it and uh, adapted it a bit for today. Um, in the presentation, in the first picture, you are seeing a banner we made a few years ago. Uh, we made it with um, these cards that pimps use in Spain to promote uh, prostitution of women as publicity. They leave these cards everywhere because prostitution in Spain is technically decriminalized. It's not officially legal. So you can't, for example, extract taxes from it, but it's not illegal. So women are not prosecuted. And even though pimping is illegal, um, owning a brothel is not illegal. So it's kind of a gray area, but really it's, it's tolerated. And it has a very big presence here in Spain because we are a tourist destination, essentially. So the, our banner says abolition of prostitution. So in Spanish speaking feminists use the term abolitionism a lot when speaking about ending prostitution and the sex trade, ending pornography, ending the um, um, reproductive exploitation of women and abolishing gender, right? So ending gender. So we call ourselves abolitionists generally. We have nothing to do with the abolitionist movement of prisons in the US. It's a completely different Thing, just to be clear beforehand. So uh, I'm going to try to give a bit of context uh, about what's happened in Spain in the past years, beginning in 2014, let's say. For us, 2014 was a real um, catalyst mo moment because at the time we had a very conservative um, Catholic uh, justice minister who wanted to basically remove <laughs> abortion rights. Uh, we had um, achieved a new law in 2010 that enabled women to abort, uh, have an abortion legally up until the 14th week and the 22nd when there is a risk to the mother. And um, the, the conservative government wanted to get rid of it. So there was this explosion of uh, feminist mobilization that year that nobody was expecting, like not the conservatives, not the feminists themselves, it was incredible. And it was it was a movement organized by a small group of women uh, of um, traditional historical feminists uh, in Asturias in the north of Spain who organized this thing called the Freedom Train. They came down by train from Asturias in the north to Madrid and then a demo was waiting for them in Madrid and we marched together. And for many young feminists at the time, it was like a wake up call. For, I was 24 and many of us there realized something was happening that we didn't know about before. And for us, it was an opportunity because thousands and thousands of women were at that demo. And that was really shocking. Nobody was expecting such a big thing. 
you have a meeting in the picture uh, on top and the demo, a small picture of the demo and the picture underneath. The flags are the Asturias regional flag. There you have nothing to do with anything religious. <laughs> it's just the regional flag because Spain is really big on regionalism, as you probably know, just to make that clear. So 2014 was a, a real catalyst movement and we, uh, fe the feminist movement in Spain was obviously influenced and in contact with the global feminist movement and those years were big everywhere. There was the 2000, the year 2000 uh, Global Women's Strike Initiative that had been launched in many countries around the world under really general demands, let's say about um, uh, maternity leave and so on in many countries and that idea uh, remains alive uh, in many countries and um, was the precursor for the 2016 Polish and Argentinian uh, mobilizations. The Polish women uh, actually striked already on 2016 and it was a huge success. They rallied around abortion rights even though a few years back they were they lost abortion rights due to their constitutional court. Unfortunately, I think it was 2021. It's a it's a dark time for feminism and for women's rights in general across the board, as we know nowadays. But at the time, they were successful, and uh, it was also a very big year in Argentina. the The Argentinian um, feminist movement um, was became massive that year, also around abortion rights and uh, around um, uh, male violence, protesting against male violence uh, mainly. And then in 2017, it was the Washington March with the global women's strike. And that was a global success. It was a success in the US with uh, half a million women at, uh, at the White House and around maybe 3 million women worldwide, probably more, but it's difficult to tell. It was also the beginning of the controversy with trans activists about the pussy hats and the pussy hats and so on, about how it was transphobic for women to fight for their rights. I can't go into detail, but I'm showing the slide in case anyone wants to stop the video later and wants to look at them a little bit. Uh, you have the Polish uh, women uh, on the left and the Argentinian women up top. So uh, in Spain, obviously, everyone was attentive. Feminists were very attentive. Uh, in, in Europe, the feminist movement in different countries is always working together with women from other countries. So we were very attentive to what was happening in Poland, and we are always attentive at what's happening in Latin America, of course, in Spain. And uh, we usually work together with feminists, um, as you know, <laughs> from Latin America, of course. So 2017 was a very big year for um, feminist demonstrations in the, especially the Women's Day demonstration. And 2018 was the peak. It was absolutely incredible. Um, women striked. Women striked all throughout the country. Women walked out of their of their jobs. It wasn't just white colored women. Like I remember seeing shops, like big brand name shops, closing down in the middle of the day, in the middle of Madrid. I remember breaking down crying in 2018 because I couldn't believe what was happening. I could not believe the amount of women uh, mobilizing. In the demo in Madrid in 2018, there was one million people, which is unprecedented completely unprecedented in in spain for sure and incredible for a for a city the size of madrid and i mean it the mobilization was massive all throughout spain in many other countries in many other cities as well so obviously um this was this did not go unnoticed for the so-called left-wing parties right so in spain we at that time we had this new part several parties in the end because they splintered but the main one was Podemos. These new so-called left-wing parties that had come out of the Occupy movement, which in Spain was called Indignados, and they had effectively by then, by 2018 or so, 2019, they had effectively cannibalized the traditional left-wing parties, which in Spain was mainly Izquierda Unida, but there were also others. And they were very attentive at how strong the feminist movement was. And they they knew they had to use it to their advantage, <laughs> and they decided to do so. So feminist so feminism was very horizontal. The organ the organizing assemblies and meeting groups were very, let's say, anarchistic. You know, very egalitarian and so on, non hierarchical. So they were very easy to co opt. 
and they were co-opted. There was this strategy of entryism uh, from the pseudo left that was carried out. And in exchange, the Podemos party, mainly Podemos, gave their apparatus uh, as a means of support for the mobilizations. So at the time, many feminists believed they were well intentioned. Many voted for them. I voted for them in 2019 and came to regret it very, very strongly because I picked trans very soon after. And back, back then uh, in 2018, Podemos had already proposed a self ID law, which they barely changed a few things. I really liked uh, Tuleika's presentation because it's shocking how similar the legislation all around the world is, right? I mean, you can see it's a template <laughs> that they've purposely exported everywhere. Like the definitions are the same, it's incredible. So Podemos already had that text, which is always the same text in 2018, and very few women were attentive about it back then, but there were a lot of fractures already around the prostitution debate. So in the main areas that had been co-opted, uh, prostitution was taboo, pornography was taboo, you could not be critical of it, there was a lot of, um, we call them regulationists, we don't call them decrim because in Spain it makes no sense because prostitution is legal in Spain, so it's, it, we call them regulationists and uh, the women in favor of Nordic model are abolitionists. So a lot of women in the pseudo left wing parties are women and men, of course, are pro regulation, so pro pimp and punters rights, right, the, the right to sexually exploit women and to uh, trade with women and it was a taboo you could not broach the subject we tried we went to the to the meetings we went to the assemblies for several years abolitionists tried to broach the subject this is a women's rights issue we need to address it prostitution is a huge problem in spain because as i said we are a tourist destination and especially in catalonia barcelona barcelona is porn central of europe it's like the porn industry is really, really strong and, and the pimp lobby is very, very strong in Barcelona. And uh, it, was, it was impossible. It was impossible. We were boycotted at every turn. We were, it was impossible. So by, by the end of 2018, feminists, uh, actual feminists, decided to organize. And in Madrid, uh, there, was an, there was a meeting called the, the Abolitionist uh, Assembly, Asamblea Abolicionista de Madrid, which eventually became an organization and then afterwards would give uh, rise to several uh, fe radical feminist groups in Madrid. And, um, and um, this um, was a meeting place for ra younger, let's say, I know it's a stereotype, but let's say younger radical feminist st stereotypes. I can't see you. Uh, younger radical feminist stereotypes and, um, sorry, I was distracted, radical feminist um, women and older, more traditional feminists uh, who had been traditionally involved in um, the Women's Day marches and so on and organizing that had been sidelined when this political co-opting of pseudo-liberal feminism happened. So we began organizing in our own groups at the end of 2018, and we kept trying to participate in the official channels for the official Women's Day marches, and it was impossible, and we were boycotted at every turn. And in 2020, we decided, okay, we can't participate in this anymore because what had been happening up until then was we were relegated to the back of the march. Our demands were impossible to put in the official manifesto. We had no access to the press. So, um, so in 2020, the Women's Day Lib Femme, the new official organizers, which were not the official organizers, but the co-opters, uh, decided to get rid of the women's strike and invent this thing that they called the Women's Revolt. And they organized different little events around different cities in Spain. And this is one example that you have here of a trans-identified male saying in front of a little girl, uh, how prostitution is a revolt and how prostitution is empowering to women. I can't play the video, but it's it's on Facebook. If you look for it, for Revuelta Puteril, if there's a way to share links, I'll share the link later, maybe in the comments or and so on. And um, this is just one example of trans activism completely co-opting. Of course, males were taking, trans identified males were taking place, uh, were participating in these meetings and so on. So it was. <laughs> 
it was impossible to have women only meetings and we abolitionists who organized alternative meetings were of course outed as transphobes on twitter and so on um so in 2020 on women's day we decided to bypass in madrid to bypass the official march and go to the front and get to the end of the march before anyone else to avoid clashes but to try and get a picture for the press before the rest of the march arrived and the organizers decided we were a terrible transphobic and horrifying threat and they came after us and before the march arrived there was no march it was arriving it was behind us and they came and decided to push us to shove us to mm, kick us in the i i got um hit with my own megaphone in the mouth i got uh kicked in the stomach with an elbow i gave a report to the police that evening and other other fellow feminists also did uh but it was useless because of course we didn't know who these women were and it was mostly women doing the dirty job for the men and they pushed it and they shoved us and they broke our banners with a knife and they threw our banners to the ground and that graffiti says um no abolitionist will keep her head we are coming for you that appeared on women's day 2020 in our main university in madrid complutense de madrid the violence we were experiencing at the time was at an all-time high i think it was it was the worst time 2020 and of course the media was reporting nothing of course if they ever spoke about it it was to talk to lie about us you no know? not to not to tell the truth right so um, that's uh juventudes feministas one of the radical feminist groups uh being kicked out by the organizers and the women affiliated with the organizers in Barcelona, there was this man at the demonstration saying, I will break a turf. And he put it on Twitter and saying, we're going to kill the fucking turfs. Like this is the level of open violence. Like Barcelona is even worse than Madrid. I'll just pass the slides. And if anyone's interested, they can stop and read them. OK, so basically last year, we organized our own demonstration. And it was a huge success. We got 10,000 people for a completely independent, uh, non-affiliated organization. And I think the one that was backed by the government got like 30,000 people. So in comparison, it was incredible. And like the feeling was a huge success. And it was a demo that was in, in, their man, in our manifesto specifically, abolitionist of prostitution, abolitionist of, of pornography, abolitionist of reproductive exploitation, and abolitionist of gender, specifically against the Self-ID Act that got passed the other day here in Spain. So this year we are again organizing our own demonstration the demonstration for the 8th of March. We don't care what the other ones are, are doing. It will be at, uh, we'll start at 6.30 p.m. from Glorieta da Tocha. If anyone wants to come, please come. Uh, I think it's going to be a huge success because everyone in the feminist movement is very tired of Irene Montero. These are our, uh, this is our manifesto in eight points. I'll just pass the slides very quickly so people can stop and read them. Of their leisure if they want and that's it for me thank you so much for having us <laughs>